Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at the Red White Hactos deck in Standard as voted on by my patrons. First off, let's take a look at Hactos the Unscarred, 4 mana for a 6-1 legendary creature that has to attack each combat if able, and as Hactos enters the battlefield, choose 2, 3 or 4 at random, and Hactos has protection from each converted mana cost other than the chosen number. So as a reminder, protection means that Hactos can be damaged, can be enchanted or equipped, can be blocked and can be targeted by sources with converted mana costs other than the chosen number. So the random nature of Hactos makes it somewhat tricky to build a deck around him, because while it does make it difficult for the opponent to interact with Hactos, it also means that we can't meaningfully interact with our legendary creature, but I did find a few cards that do interact favorably with Hactos, and one of those is Response Resurgence, a split card where we have Response for 2 mana, dealing 5 damage to target attacking or blocking creature at instant speed, so a serviceable removal spell, just a bit weak if there's a Teferi in play, but then Resurgence is a card we're excited about, 5 mana for a sorcery that says creatures we control gain first strike and vigilance until end of turn. After this main phase, there is an additional combat phase followed by an additional main phase. So we get to attack with Hactos twice, and he also gains vigilance and first strike, meaning that if the opponent does randomly have a creature that could block Hactos, we can now still attack into it without losing our creature. And then the Vigilance also means that Hactos will still stay back on defense after he's done attacking, so he can still potentially protect our life total. So Resurgence synergizes very well with Hactos. And then some other cards that synergize nicely with Hactos are the War of the Spar Planeswalkers with these static abilities, Nahiri particularly giving creatures we control first strike as long as it's our turn, so Hactos will be able to attack past any potential blockers. And then the Minus X and Nahiri dealing X damage to target sapped creature, so it's still useful outside of the static ability. And then we also have Samut, Tyrant Smasher, giving creatures we control haste, so we can potentially attack with Hactos right away. The minus one, not super useful unless we randomly roll four on Hactos so we can target it. And then Angrath, Captain of Chaos, giving creatures we control menace, so now the opponent needs to have two creatures with the randomly rolled number on Hactos in order to block him. And then the minus two amasses twice, so we get to make a 2-2 zombie token. So all these Planeswalkers also work quite nicely with Hactos, and I've ended up uh, including even more Planeswalkers, and then top off our curve with Sarkon, the Masterless, to turn all our Planeswalkers into 4-4 Dragons, which also works quite nicely with Resurgence, if we can potentially plus Sarkon turning all our Planeswalkers into 4-4 Dragons, and get an additional combat phase, we can potentially end the game on the spot. So that's kind of where the idea from the deck came from. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck. At 2 mana we also have the full playset of Thrill of Possibility, since in some matchups we want to discard some of our useless removal spells like Deafening Clarion and uh, be able to draw some additional cards instead. And then of course we've got a Response Resurgence, we've got the full playset of Bonecrusher Giant, which also counts kind of as a 2-drop in this deck, dealing 2 damage with Stomp, and afterwards giving us a 4-3 creature, which of course also gives us a nice body to go with the Resurgence. Then we've got some of our one-off Planeswalkers, Tybalt making 1-1 one -one Devils, saying opponents can gain life, and when the Devils die they also deal 1 damage to any target. We've got Dovin, Hand of Control, which can take care of larger threats that some of our burn spells might not be able to deal with, and also makes opposing spells more expensive. And we also have one copy of Sahili that can generate 1-1 one -one servo tokens whenever we cast non-creature spells, and our deck is filled with non-creature spells including our Planeswalkers, won't be using the minus 2 ability very often. And then we have the full playset of Deafening Clarion, dealing 3 damage to each creature, and giving our creatures lifelink until end of turn, so this gives us a chance against the red decks, and the ability also works quite nicely with our 4-4 dragons from Sarkhan, and uh, Lifelink, of course, can also be nice with our uh, Hactos. So hopefully we don't roll 3 with Hactos, so we can use Daphne Clarin with Hactos in play still. Then at 4 mana, we've got our full playset of Hactos. We've got our 1 of Angrath, Samut, and Nahiri. And then at 5 mana, the full playset of Sarkon to synergize with our other Planeswalkers. And the static ability on Sarkon is also quite useful nowadays, with Anax making so many Seder tokens, so we can potentially shoot them down as long as we control a dragon. And then two copies of Elspeth Conquers Death, which is also great with all these Planeswalkers that we can return from the graveyard, can also get back Hactos, and uh, maybe with a Samut in play attack right away. 
and then two copies of Chandra Awakened Inferno to top off our curve as another sweeper effect that can also help us end the game. So pretty high curve, which is why we're playing 26 lands in addition to the 4th roll possibility, which can also help us hit our land drops. We've got one of each castle, this can make some tokens and this can pump the team, which is useful if we're making a couple tokens with Tybalt or Sahili. And then 7 planes, 7 mountains, we've got 4 sacred foundry, 4 temple of triumph, and even 2 windscarred crack could also potentially be replaced with a few copies of fabled passage. But I like having a few extra dual lands because with one dual land in play it becomes much easier to cast Hactos on curve. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw and seems fine. Opponent leading with a Leyline of Abundance, so can expect some green mana dorks. And Gilded Goose turn 1. So can maybe use our Stomp next turn to take it out. Opponent on Teamer Colors and a Merleaf Pixie. Alright, I guess we'll be stomping that instead. And a second Merleaf Pixie thanks to the Gilded Goose. Well, might be able to use Deafening Clarion as well next turn. I think I still want to take out a Pixie just to limit how many uh, expensive cards they can cast. So this turn they can maybe cast a 5 drop, so could still see a Nissa if they have a land. It's gonna be an Omen of the Hunt instead, that's fine. And then next turn we'll cast our Clarion and set up our Hactos. And black mana too, so our opponent's going deep. Maybe a Niv-Mizzet uh, Reborn deck. Could be. It's going to be a Thassa Deep Dwelling. Alright, so hopefully we don't roll 4 with Hactos, otherwise Thassa can tap him down. Alright, we got a 2, so Merleaf Pixies could potentially still block, but we do have two copies of Response Resurgence. Alright, Paradise Roots. That's unfortunate. But, uh, yeah, with two Response Resurgence in hand, we should be fine, even drew a third one. So, let's get going. Get in for 12, unless they want to trump. And next turn we can do it again. So really seeing the synergy here with uh, Response Resurgence and Hactos. niv at Reborn. Yeah, that's fine. Can block Hactos. And then this... Uh, Resurgence should be lethal. Thassa with niv is kind of sweet, being able to re-trigger the Enter Battlefield ability. But it's not going to be enough here. Resurgence, they can chump Hactos once, but they'll still end up taking six. All right, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play, and uh, we've got a pretty decent hand against a more aggressive deck with double Clarion. I guess we'll give it a try. And then Temple can maybe go digging for Hactos, and there we go. Tapped Castle Lockthwain. And it's gonna be Forest into Paradise Roots. Yeah, let's kill the Paradise Root. Midnight Reaper. Just gonna run out Hactos for now. Did roll a 3, so the Midnight Reaper can interact with it, and so can a potential Murder Strider. So 3 is probably the least favorite uh, number here in this matchup. Let's 
gonna be Rankel instead, which can force us to sacrifice Haktos as well. So that's another way to get rid of it. But I guess now we'll just cast our Clarion. And then we can later maybe conquer death to uh, get Haktos back. Which is pretty flavorful too. So they are playing the adventure package. Innkeeper into Falmar Knights. Into another Falmar Knights. Into Paradise Roots. Well, there's no real point in playing Dovin now, I guess. And I'll put a land on top so we can Chandra to wipe the board next turn. Questing Beast we can response. And Chandra will wipe the board. Murder Strider takes out Chandra. And a Paradise Roots. Let's get rid of this Dovin. And I guess cash in the Clarion. Probably keep a land in hand in case we draw another Thrill. Wanna wait until they present a target for Elspeth Conqueror's death before we run it out. And a Questing Beast will do. And a backup Hactos. Still gonna conquer death here. They do still have Castle Lockthwain in play, which can draw them more cards. So we're not out of the woods. Sarkhan not bad. Um, yeah, I guess Sarkhan make a dragon might be better here. It's close. If Haktos gets a 3, we're going to be pretty disappointed. Otherwise, I guess it's fine. Yeah, I guess we'll play Haktos. Uh, we got a 3, that's too bad. Hopefully no second Murder Strider. Against a Rankle, I guess Haktos is also a bit weaker than making a 4-4 token. Well, we are gonna get back a Chandra next turn. Looks like they maybe have a way of getting a creature back here. Order of Midnight gets back Questing Beasts. So, yeah, let's get back Chandra. And deal some damage. And then we can make a dragon token with Sarkon, which can block the questing beasts. I fight with the dragon's rage. Your end has arrived. And next turn we should be able to close out the game. I guess I'll keep up Stomp just in case here. Might stomp the Order of Midnight end of turn. Alright, a Rankle as well. So Rankle goes after Sarkon, and yeah, now we can use Stomp to finish off Rankle. Trade for Questing Beasts, and next turn attack for 8 in the air, alongside Haktos. Alright, sweet, so pretty back and forth game, but in the end Elspeth conquered death and got back Chandra for the win. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a pretty controlling draw, so fine against more aggressive decks. Uh, not great if we need to be more proactive. I'll try it. Put 
opponent with a Temple of Mystery. Dove in the draw. And Leafkin Druids we can wipe away. Uro is a good target for Elspeth Conqueror's death. It's gonna be Nissa who shakes the worlds. Dovin doesn't make planeswalkers more expensive, otherwise that could have been a reason to play Dovin to prevent Anissa from being cast. But uh, I guess I'll jump and then... I don't know if there's a point in targeting Nissa since if we find a land we're just gonna conquer death to get rid of her. Yeah, I'll just go face. And then I wouldn't mind Tibble dying so we can get it back with the third chapter. If it doesn't die, it could still be useful if we draw Sarkon. So we'll let Tibbled go. Cavalier of Thorns, quite good. That's also an important one to actually exile. And Agent of Treachery in the graveyard, opponent's not playing nice. Yeah, I guess Dovin can target the Cavalier. And then probably just gonna pass a turn. I'm impressed anyone would be so foolish as perfection. Could play the lands, might want it in case we find the thrill possibility. Casting the Clarion just to kill the 3-3 three -three here doesn't seem quite worth it. It's going to be a Risen Reef into Uro, perhaps, into another Risen Reef. Opponent does have enough cards in Graveyard to escape Uro if they wanted to. Now Deafening Clarion looks a lot more appealing. Although, if they attack Dovin, I can jump with the Devil and take out a Risen Reef. But I guess I want a Clarion anyway. I'm going to be one damage short of killing Cavalier, because I could next turn get back Tybalt, make a Devil, cast Clarion, and then the two damage from the Devil's Dying could also go to the Cavalier, but we're still one short. So I think I will jump... ...and probably just go upstairs. Actos is a good draw. Clarion, make a devil. My friend is here. Target Cavalier. Looking to elevate yourself. Uh, perhaps a pair of stilts? And then next turn we can play Hactos. Bolt preventing the life gain at least. Another Clarion. Yeah, let's just play Hactos. Roll the four, so currently can be interacted with. So I don't even know if I need to minus Dovin. Opponent could be playing Thassa, which can tap down Hactos. Omnath, I guess, would be pretty bad. I think I'm just gonna pass. And then I have response at the ready as well. Cavalier 
finds a land, puts nests on the graveyard. And another Cavalier of Thorns. Thrill of Possibility can discard Deafening Clarion. Could also make another Devil and then cast Clarion to take out a 6 toughness creature. But it doesn't seem worth it. Could also cast uh, Resurgence here instead of going for the Thrill. Get in for 12 and still have Hactos back on defense. That might be better, to be honest. Yeah, let's do that. And then I don't think I want to minus Tybalt, since preventing a life gain seems quite relevant. But I will target a Cavalier of Thorns. So we could kill them next turn if they don't find an answer to Hactos. It's going to be Hydroid Crisis, no life gain. Thanks to Tybalt, doing a ton of work in this matchup. And yeah, opponent doesn't find an answer and explodes, wow. Well, it seemed like our opponent was doing way more powerful things than us. But uh, it turns out that just having a 6-1 unblockable is uh, good enough here, and then Tybalt actually did a ton of work as well this game, preventing a lot of life gain. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with, uh, I guess, an acceptable hand. Can cast our Hactos if we draw one, and we're up against Monorad, so this is where we need to draw our Deafening Clarion. Although a Stomp definitely helps too, and the uh, tokens are not bad. Alright, it's gonna be a Dreadhorde. Arcanist here, so maybe it's the uh, Cavalcade version of the red deck. And there's Hactos. So I think I'll kill the champion now in case they have a pump spell. Could definitely be the case if they're playing the Arcanist as well. Alternatively, I could respond to kill the Arcanist, but maybe I want to keep it to go with Hactos. So I'll just stomp the champion, and then next turn I can decide between Tybalt and just play the giant. Uh, they're gonna Rimrock Knight, get in for three, and play the Rimrock Knight, presumably. So Tybalt make a token, lines up quite well here. Because even if they kill the token, we might be able to kill the Rimrock Knight. And that sets up for a turn for Hactos, got a backup, and an Elspeth Conqueror's Death to get it back. Warboss, alright, that's a scary card. So we should be able to keep Tybalt at 1, but of course that's as good as dead, unless we find a Sarkon. Right, I guess it's Hakto's time. And we got a 4, I think that's good. At least in this matchup. So we've got a nice 6-1 blocker, probably won't see any attacks. And next turn we've got a lot of options between Resurgence, Elspeth Conquers Death, just play the Giant. It's gonna be a Torbran, alright. So they will be able to block Hactos with Torbran. But we've got another Resurgence. Yeah, not sure what to place. I could conquer Death Torbran. But that leaves us a bit exposed on the way back. Maybe just going for Resurgence here is the best. Leaves a Hactos on defense too. And we can do it again next turn. And then... Uh, they won't really have the option of taking 12. Opponent attacks with everyone. So we get to block the war boss, I guess. Taking four, eight, plus another three. 
So, could be that if they have a bunch of burn spells in hand. But, uh, this is probably still our best bet. And it's gonna be an Ember Cleave instead. So that should do it too. And a Rimrock Knight for good measure. And an Infuriates. Alright. I guess we're pretty dead here. So even had we killed Torbran, I'm pretty sure we still would have died here. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and uh, sure, this seems fine. Could use an extra red source, could use a Hactos or maybe a Sarkon to help us close. Although we do have a Chandra already. Gonna have to bottom response resurgence for now. We've got a Stomp and Clarion for early game interaction, so shouldn't need response. And resurgence is only really good if we have a Hactos or a Sarkon to go with it. Alright, there's Sarkon. So end of turn we could stomp just to next turn play the giants. Yeah, I think I'm okay running out our bone crusher. A radical idea from our opponents. So some sort of blue rat spells deck. So this is probably a matchup where Deafening Clarion is not too useful, so we wouldn't mind finding a Thrill possibility. Lava Coil takes out the Giants, but deals 2 damage on the way out, and yeah, drawing a second Clarion here is pretty bad. Well, at least Dovin will make their spells a bit more expensive. And it's an extra Planeswalker once we play Sarkon. Synthesize the facts. Discards Ox of Agonos. Well, we drew three copies of Deafening Clarion, the worst card in the matchup, presumably. So, it's uh, pretty sad here. Just gonna have to pass. Merfolk Secret Keeper for the self mill, revealing Arclight Phoenix. Alright, fair enough. So a dedicated self mill Phoenix deck. Dovin does make it more difficult for the opponent to cast three spells in the same turn to get back Arclight Phoenix. And we do finally get to play Sarkon. Opponent opts in response. And I think I'm just gonna plus instead of making a dragon. Otherwise, Sarkon risks dying to a Stomp or some other small burn spell. Stay away from my brother. My plan is crystallizing. Discards another copy of Arclight Phoenix. Well, Deafening Clarion is probably going to be somewhat useful after all. Opponent casts Ox of Agonos. Discarding a bunch of cards and drawing three. Back up Sarkon. So I get two plus. I will call the dragons. And then take out their planeswalker and hit for four. Even with my insight, I didn't foresee this. Alternatively, I could have used Dovin to target Ox, and then I could have maybe plus Sarkon, played a Sarkon, made a dragon, so we could present lethal next turn. But they are likely to return a few copies of Arclight Phoenix, at least. So the dragon doesn't gain haste, sadly, otherwise Chandra could uh, help us close out the game. But Chandra's still pretty good against Phoenix of Ash, could exile it. Could just uh, plus to start dealing damage to the opponent, that seems pretty good too. Yeah, I think 
I'm just going to get in for eights. And then plus Chandra. And that puts the opponent on a four turn clock at the very least. And yeah, opponent explodes, so despite drawing three clarions, we still got the job done. Dovin potentially doing a lot of work here against a spell heavy deck. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a good opening hand. Gonna start at 22 life thanks to our Windscarred Crag. And uh, turn 3 Dovin, turn 4 Hactos. Hopefully turn 5 Sarkon. Robber of the Rich. I guess that's a fine target for Dovin. Alright, opponent maybe on a sweet uh, Grixis rogue deck, who knows. Important to note about the adventure creatures like Brazen Borrower and Bonecrusher Giant 2 is that the adventure half of the card is the converted mana cost that matters when they're trying to interact uh, with your creature. So for example, if Hactos gets a 2, then Stomp and Petty Theft can target it, even though the creature itself might have a converted mana cost of 3. Well, we got Angras Rampage out of the way, that's a very good removal spell against Hactos. Sadly, rolled a 2, so Robber of the Rich will be able to trade for Hactos. So hopefully we can draw Response Resurgence, Stomp, Deafening Clarion, Nahiri, Angrath. We've got a couple ways to get past a Robber here. But 2 also means that they could potentially have some cheap removal to kill Hactos outside of just blocking with a Robber. So this is probably not going to be a Hactos game, but uh, maybe a Sarkon game. Thief of Sanity, pretty scary too here. Yeah, I think I'm just going to go for Sarkon here. I could go digging with Thrill to try and save Hactos, but it doesn't seem like uh, our best game plan. So yeah, seeing the downside of Hactos, sometimes there are four mana card traits for the opponent's two drop. Hopefully this dragon holds. Otherwise the thief is going to start connecting. Remorse takes another Sarkon. Our opponent actually takes a thrill. So I guess I don't have an answer for the current Sarkon. Opponent's going to stay back. Yeah, I'm fine if they want to double block Sarkon if we plus. They could double block and trade. But that's fine by me. Opponent takes it, and then I guess I'll just pass. Now they do attack. Opponent got a land, and we'll block the thief. And I've got a backup. So yeah, I think we're just gonna thrill discarding Sarkon, try and hit our land drop for Chandra. Alright, got a bunch of other planeswalkers instead, and a deafening clarion. That's pretty good too. So let's just go for the clarion. Get in for eight. And next turn we could have lethal. Their best draw is probably like Robber of the Rich, kill Sarkon, find something good off the top. Ooh, Agent of Treachery. Alright, it's not bad. They are coming. 
still no six line for Chandra. Could put my opponent to three and then try and burn them out with Chandra's plus ability. But I think I prefer just taking out Sarkon. And then we'll make a zombie here. Yorox Fenlurker. Probably just keep the two Chandras. And if we draw land, we can attack with both and ping them with Chandra potentially. Or a Sarkon, that's good enough too. Alright, sweet. So yeah, sometimes Hakto's doesn't quite get there, but in those games we can rely on Sark on the Masterless to win us the game instead. So that's going to be it for me today. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.